Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we will focus on multiple encryption and triple DES. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one, understand the drawbacks of DES. Outcome number two, know about multiple encryption. Outcome number three, we will know about double DES or double DES. Outcome number four, we will know about meet in the middle attack. And outcome number 5, we will know about triple DES. Let's step into the topic of the day, multiple encryption and triple DES. So what do you mean by multiple encryption? We know very well that the plain text is going to be encrypted and we will be getting the ciphertext. And if the ciphertext is again encrypted, we assume that it becomes more complex. But there are some side effects when we do that. Let's focus on that now. We know very well that we are talking about data encryption standard DES. And this has some drawbacks. The main drawback is that the effective key length is of 56 bits, where the key space is having 2 power 56 keys. At the same time, DES is also vulnerable to brute force attack. Because the key space is 2 power 56, we have already seen the security aspects of DES elaborately in the previous lecture, where we confirmed that brute force attack can be launched on DES and we can easily break DES. We have DES cracker as well, isn't it? So we have a lot of drawbacks. So the main drawback is that the potential vulnerability of DES to a brute force attack. Because the effective key size is 56 bits. So obviously we can have a maximum of 2 power 56 possibilities in the key. At the same time, talking about a new encryption algorithm called AES, it is completely a new algorithm. It is not an enhancement in DES, whereas AES is completely a new algorithm. It's a new design. It's completely different. Is there any way to improve the security of DES? And that is why we are thinking about an another alternative to DES that's not only AES. Why don't we make some improvements or enhancements on DES so that we can make DES to be also a powerful algorithm? An attempt of making DES to be powerful is the use of multiple encryption with DES and with multiple keys. Say you have DES algorithm. Instead of using the DES algorithm only one time for generating the ciphertext, if we go for multiple time encryption, we assume that this multiple encryption will be powerful. If you have DES algorithm and if you do encryption two times, then it is double DES. We will also focus on triple DES. For now, just understand multiple encryption is introduced on DES just to enhance the security. Let's now see what is double DES. From the name itself, we can understand that we are going to apply the DES algorithm two times, right? Say for example, if we have a plain text, this plain text is actually given to an encryption algorithm. Here the encryption algorithm is DES algorithm. Where this encryption algorithm is going to take the plain text and the key. As I mentioned, we are going to do encryption two times. So obviously we need two keys, right? So this is K1 which is applied for the first time for the encryption. And the output is the intermediary ciphertext. We are not going to say the output of this encryption function as the ciphertext. Now, the intermediary ciphertext is again given to the same encryption algorithm one more time, where this is going to take another key K2 and whatever we get is the ciphertext. So if you see here, the plain text is actually converted into ciphertext using the encryption algorithm two times with two different keys K1 and K2. Remember, K1 is not equal to K2. In this, the effective key length is 56 bits. So here, this is 56 bits. Here, we have another 56 bits. So a total of 112 bit key is used here, but it's not used in a single stage, whereas it is used as 56 bits in one encryption and the remaining 56 bits in another encryption. This is about the double DES encryption. Let me now show you the double DES decryption. Here is the double DES decryption. If you see here, the ciphertext is actually given to a decryption function, but this is actually taking K2 first. Because in decryption, the order of the key that we use in encryption is going to be reversed. Because this is the encryption function which takes the intermediary ciphertext and generates the actual ciphertext. Now this actual ciphertext is generated using the key K2 first. Obviously this ciphertext is generated using K2, isn't it? Though the ciphertext is generated using K1 and K2, the key K1 is responsible for generating the intermediary ciphertext and K2 is responsible for generating ciphertext. So when we do the decryption, we should follow the reverse approach. Like the ciphertext must be given to a decryption algorithm. Just understand this is the decryption algorithm now. This ciphertext is given to decryption algorithm which takes K2. This produces an intermediary result 
and this is given to the test decryption algorithm which takes k1 and finally it produces k2 so if you proceed in this order this is exactly this diagram so the cipher text is given to the test decryption algorithm which takes k2 first and it produces an intermediary result and this intermediary cipher text is then given to the same decryption algorithm to be precise the same des decryption algorithm one more time with k1 as the key and finally whatever we get is the plain text now do you think that this will definitely enhance the security of the DES? What we complained about DES, the key size is small, which is 56 bits, isn't it? So obviously the key space is 2 power 56. Now here we are using 2 power 56, another 2 power 56. So obviously the key size here in double DES is 112 bits. Do you think that it has enhanced the security of DES? If you think yes, then you are wrong. Let me justify this. This double DES or double DES is vulnerable to an important attack, the meet in the middle attack. In order to understand what is meet in the middle attack, I wanted to give you this information. Let's take, we have a plain text which is start. So I am just using the plain text, intermediary text and the cipher text just for understanding purpose. But this will not be the exact cipher text that will be resulted or this will not be the intermediary cipher text resulted because of this DES encryption or decryption. This is merely for understanding purpose. So what we are doing here is, let's take a plain text which is start. Now this start plain text is actually going to be given to the DES encryption algorithm. This encryption algorithm is obviously DES encryption algorithm because we are talking about double DES. So now what this double DES is going to do, it's going to take a key K1 where the effective key size is of 56 bits and let's assume the intermediary result is inter. Generally the cipher text will be scrambled but for understanding purpose I am just mentioning it as inter as I already mentioned this will not be the case. So let's assume the intermediary cipher text that is coming out of this encryption algorithm is inter. Now what happens? This inter cipher text is again fed into the same DES encryption algorithm like this, right? Now what this encryption algorithm is going to do? It's going to take this as the input and this key as the input k2 and it produces the cipher text. Let's assume the cipher text we are getting here is final. So what we are understanding from here is the plain text start is actually converted into the intermediary cipher text and this intermediary cipher text is converted into the actual cipher text final. So it's clear that we have understood the start plain text is actually converted into final which is the cipher text and here inter is the intermediary cipher text. Now how the decryption works? It's the reverse, isn't it? Now the double DES decryption takes the cipher text which is final here. This final is actually fed into the decrypt function which takes k2 as the input and it produces inter. You know why? Because this inter was fed into the encryption algorithm with k2 which produces final. When you do the reverse, the decryption, the final is given to decryption function which takes k2 which produces inter. That is what which is mentioned here. So the ciphertext final is fed into the decryption algorithm which takes the key k2. Can you see here? It takes the key k2. Now obviously it will produce inter, this is the intermediary ciphertext. Now this intermediary ciphertext is given to the decryption algorithm that is the DES decryption with k1 as the key. It gives back the plain text start, that is this part. Can you see here? Start is converted into inter with k1 in the encryption. Whereas in the decryption, inter is converted into start with k1. That is inter is converted into start with the help of the key k1. So the idea is very much required in order to understand the security aspects of double DES. As I already mentioned, double DES is vulnerable to meet in the middle attack. Let's understand what is meet in the middle attack. So I am removing this portion from here. Let's just have only this portion. In chapter 1, we have seen various cryptanalytic attacks where I explained about the known plain text attack. The attack we are talking in double DES is also a known plain text attack. To be precise, it is a meet in the middle attack. Here the known plain text attack which I am referring is the meet in the middle attack. What is a known plain text attack? Can you recollect in chapter 1 we have seen some different types of attacks where we have seen known plain text attack, chosen plain text attack, known cipher text only attack. So there I explained you what is known plain text attack. Where the attacker knows the plain text and the cipher text combo, isn't it? If you have some doubts, I request you to navigate to chapter 1 of this lecture series and find the different types of cryptanalytic attacks. So what we are assuming here is the attacker who knows the plain text and the cipher text. That is, he knows for start we will be getting final as the cipher text. The attacker may not be knowing about the complete plain text and cipher text combinations, but let's assume this attacker knows for this plain text start 
we will get the cipher text final using double this. If this information is known to this attacker, he may not be knowing other informations or other cipher text for other plain text. But if he knows this alone, for this plain text start, we will get only final as the cipher text when we use double this. Then this is sufficient for this attacker to find out what are the keys that are used. Actually, the intention of cryptanalysis is not only to find the cipher text. The main thing is to know the key, isn't it? So the attacker's intention will be finding the key. If the key is known, obviously the attacker can understand what is the plain text and what is the cipher text. And once the key is revealed to attacker or once the key is known to the attacker, there is no use of sending this message confidentially because confidentiality is gone. Now I will explain you what is meet in the middle attack, which is a known plain text attack. Here the main assumption is the attacker knows the plain text and cipher text combo. In general, P1 and C1 info is known. So for P1 plain text, C1 is the cipher text. In this example, for the plain text start, final is the cipher text. Now let's see how attacker intelligently working on recovering the key. It's clear that this attacker knows the plain text and the cipher text. Let's take this is the plain text start. Now this plain text start is also known to the attacker. He might not be knowing other plain text, but he knows this start. Now what this attacker is going to do is, this attacker is going to feed this to the encryption algorithm, but he doesn't know the key, isn't it? What this attacker is going to do is that, he knows double days is going to take K1 and K2 and K1 is of 56 bits. So he can have a computing machine where he can generate all 56 possibilities of key. Let's say this is the key try 1, this is key try 2, this is key try 3. So obviously he is going to launch a brute force attack, isn't it? What is brute force attack? Doing exhaustive search, all possible search. If the key space is having 2 power 56 values, then attempting all 2 power 56 values. So we will be starting with the first value. KT which I am representing here is a key try. Key try 1. So he will be trying with this key. Then he will be trying with this key. Then he will be trying with this key. So how many keys he will be trying? 2 power 56 attempts, right? So let's say he maintains a database like this. Where he has all the key information. Now what this attacker is going to do is. He is going to take this key. He is going to feed this into the encryption algorithm. And whatever the cipher text he is getting, he is going to record it here. When the attacker tries the first key, let's assume he is getting the intermediary cipher text M. For the second try, he is getting T. For the third try, he is getting enter. And he will be continuing till the last value is reached. So for the 256th attempt, let's assume he is getting R as the intermediary cipher text. So he is recording everything here. But he don't know what is the key that is used as K1. But he knows all possibilities now, isn't it? And this attacker will also don't know what is this intermediary result. Because if K1 is known, then he can say this is the intermediary cipher text. For now, what he is doing? He is collecting everything here. So he is collecting everything with the help of the plain text only. Now, what the attacker knows? He knows one more important information, which is the cipher text, right? So he knows this start and he knows this final. Obviously, he is not knowing inter initially, but later he will come to know about this. Let me explain you how. So now he has another piece of information with him is the cipher text. Now what he is going to do is, he is going to take the cipher text and he is going to give it to a decryption algorithm. What this decryption algorithm is going to do? This decryption algorithm is going to take K2 as the input and it is going to generate the intermediary cipher text. But this attacker does not know what K2 is used. So what he will be doing again is, he is going to do an exhaustive search like what he did in the previous step. Let's say he is taking the cipher text and he is giving to the decryption algorithm with the first key try. Let's say for the first key try, he don't know what is K2 now, isn't it? So he is going to give the first value here and he will be recording the intermediary cipher text. Then he will be taking the second key value and he will be recording the second intermediary result. Likewise, he will be attempting all possible search, isn't it? So 2 power 56 search, he will be attempting and he will be recording everything. Now what the attacker has actually done? He has taken the plain text, he has given to the encryption algorithm, he tried all possibility of keys and he recorded all the intermediary result in a table or in a database. Likewise, he took the cipher text, he provided this to the decryption algorithm which is the desk decryption algorithm. Then he tried all possible K2s which are possible and he recorded all the values here. And it's clear that from this diagram, this intermediary result will also be this intermediary result. This is in the encryption and this is in the decryption. But this intermediary result is the same. And that is what I have explained you in the previous diagram. 
what he will be doing is he will be comparing this table with this table. So in this case, he will be definitely finding a match here. So there is inter at k3 here and there is inter at 2 power 56 attempt in this place. He has two databases. Once he compares both the databases, he will find an exact match. It may not be in k3, it may be somewhere between kt1 to kt2 power 56. Similarly, here also kt1 to 2 power 56. But there will be an exact match in one of the places. Now, let's assume in this case what we are getting inter. But this attacker will certainly not be aware of the intermediary ciphertext is inter. But when he compares these two databases, there will be one exact match inter here and this is also inter here. So, what this attacker will come to know, you know, he comes to know that he is getting inter, which is at the try 3. So, whatever the key he used at the third attempt here, that is the key k1 and whatever the key he used in order to get the intermediary ciphertext in the decryption portion, that is the actual key used for k2. Now this attacker comes to know about k1 and k2. How did he get this? Very simple process. We are assuming he knows one plain text and one ciphertext combo at least. Now with that plain text, he is encrypting and getting the intermediary ciphertext here. And with the ciphertext he knows, he is getting the intermediary result here. And merely with comparing with the all possible keys, he is able to find out the key k1 and k2 what was used for encryption and decryption. If the keys are known, everything is gone. And that is why DES is vulnerable to meet in the middle attack. So this is exactly what we call as the meet in the middle attack in double DES. I hope things are clear to you. So double DES is not widely used because of this meet in the middle attack. Now shall we go for triple DES? What is triple DES? In double DES, we did encryption two times, isn't it? In triple DES, are we going to do encryption two times? No. Please be noted that in triple DES, we are going to do encryption two times and decryption one time in encryption part alone. Can you see here? This is exactly encryption where the plain text is going to be converted into cipher text. So the plain text is actually given to the encryption algorithm. This encryption algorithm is going to take K1 as the key and it produces an intermediary result here. Now this intermediary result is actually given to the decryption algorithm with k2 and the result is again another intermediary result and that result is given to encryption algorithm one more time with k1 as the key and it produces the ciphertext c. And decryption is the quite reverse process. The ciphertext is given to decryption with k1 that is the ciphertext is given to decryption with k1. Then this value is given to decryption function with k2 as the key. So this value is given to encryption with k2 and this result is given to decryption with k1 to recover the plain text in the decryption portion. So this result is given to decryption with k1 in order to recover the plain text. If you observe here, how many different keys are used? Two different keys are used, which is k1, k2 and k1. So obviously they are not three different keys, they are two keys where k1 is used in this stage and in this stage and k2 another key is used in this stage. So in the decryption also obviously it is the reverse of encryption. So obviously decryption also takes k1 and k2 only as the key but it is used in this manner like k1 here, k2 here and k1 here. So this is triple DES where the encryption function is used exactly twice in the encryption part and in the decryption, decryption function or decryption algorithm is exactly used twice. In the encryption we have decryption portion and in decryption we have encryption function. So this is the operation of triple DES. The triple DES which you are seeing on the screen is the triple DES with two keys. Can you see here K1 and K2 only. We have one more variation of triple DES which is triple DES with three keys K1, K2 and K3. If you use K1, K2 and K3 for encryption, just do the reverse order in the decryption. So that will be triple DES with three keys. The one which we are seeing on the screen is triple DES with two keys. So this is about multiple encryptions where we have seen double DES and triple DES. Even this triple DES is vulnerable to meet in the middle attack. So you can apply the same logic what you have used in double DES for triple DES also. If there is known plain text attack, I mean if the attacker knows a particular plain text and the particular cipher text combo, then he can break the security offered by triple DES. Is meet in the middle attack or known plain text attack the only drawback when we go for multiple encryption like double DES or triple DES? We have one more drawback. The plain text is actually going through this encryption algorithm then decryption algorithm, then encryption algorithm and the ciphertext is generated. So comparing it with this, obviously this will be slower. 
because the plain text is taking a long process, a lengthy process in order to get converted into cipher text. So it is going through a lot of steps, isn't it? So obviously when we go for multiple encryption, the process will be slower. I hope the things are clear to you. And that's it guys. I hope now we understood the drawbacks of DES. We also have seen about the multiple encryption. We have seen about the double DES. And we have come to know about what is the meet in the middle attack, which is the known plain text attack. And finally, we saw what is triple DES. We have seen two variations of triple DES. One is triple DES with two keys and triple DES with three keys. And that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.